Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful sunny day. No, we're not going outside. It would. There was a big lobbying effort before when I was out in the narthex. Let's go outside. Amber can play outside. You can go outside. And I said no. I call the shots. So the Bible camp is over. What? What an exhausting ministry that is. Talk to a seven-year-old for five minutes and you need an afternoon nap. And once again, I said, do not kick the ball on the roof. The ball's on the roof. I am now waiting for a heavy wind to take it down. And you learn things from these kids. I learned a ball game named Gabba Ball, which apparently has fluid rules. Why would the kids decide they want the rules to change? The rules change. You can't kick the ball until suddenly the ball stops. Then you can kick it, but not with your right foot, with your left foot. Because if you kick it with the right foot, I don't know. I, lo I lost, lost track of what was going on. I basically just kicked the ball out into the parking lot and went inside. And in the middle of a prayer, I forgot how distracted you kids can be. One, one child looked, sitting next to me looked at my neck and went, in the middle of prayer, Pastor Chris, you have one hair that's so long. And then all of a sudden, all the kids start looking at my neck to see the hair. And at that point, I thought, we just go to amen. <laughs> They're not going to be paid attention. And then one of them goes like this. <laughs> And I went down. <laughs> so it was interesting. Um, and the success we had with the small group was due in no small part to Rachel's involvement. Rachel brought a lot of her artistic uh, abilities to the kids. They loved it. And because out of the all the kids, we had two boys. All the girls had someone they could talk to that wasn't in the 60s. So, thank you. Um, and on Wednesday, council met and they have decided to pursue the daycare license and see if we can get it. Um, so, a committee has been struck. Graham Jordan will be leading it because Graham has an education background and is detail oriented. Um, we are also, council is also looking for any volunteers to join that committee. It's a, it's an important committee and it will be moving fast because the idea, as far as I know right now, is to have the license in place by November. So it's going to have to move very, very quickly to get the application in. Edmund was already walking on his hands and knees upstairs with a tape measure measuring the room. So. If you would like to volunteer, please talk to Beth. Um, the committee right now is Beth, myself, and I believe Ian. Or is that a surprise to you? Not a surprise to you. I guess it is. So, so it's officially Ian's in. Uh, Beth has a question. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements. There is still a need for two or three more volunteers for the RIC leadership process. There is a choice of two online se seminars that you can participate in. Uh, just let us know if you're interested, and we can certainly make sure you get all the details. And we have talked to, I have been talking to one person that is interested in joining the council. And if there's anybody else out there, please come forward. But uh, we can certainly use the help on council. Thank you. And the, the RIC um, process, RIC stands for Reconciling in Christ. And what it is, it is a year-long process that we're going to take the congregation through in terms of raising awareness and understanding of people uh, who have a different sexual orientation or gender identity. And it's it, it, the idea is to make us a more inv radically inviting, welcoming, belonging, affirming community. And the best part is the skills we learn in this process 
can be applied to different groups. So we basically it's to end all the isms in our lives. So I hope you'll take part. I hope if you if you feel called to lead it or help lead it, I would appreciate it. The idea is that it shouldn't be led by the pastor, but in our context, because of our numbers, the pastor at least is going to be involved. So I hope you take consider it that day, and I hope you are called to help. Are there any other announcements? Rachel? Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Donna. Like she was the major lead and along with Pastor Chris for the kids camp. She organized us all of the activities and she worked so hard to find things that the kids would have fun with. So if you can like give her a hand with that back or like an elbow bump because she worked really hard for the kids camp. Just. Thank you, Rachel. This is for everyone knows she's in Terra this morning. Oh, yeah. Is there if there's no other analysis, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own ways, instead of putting our words before ourselves. We long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have to walk the high side on the side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. Our gathering room is number five and one.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. situation this week that has been difficult to endure, where you found comfort or recompense, or that restored joy and hope for the future.
God's kindness, grace, compassion, and love are constant. Don't rush past the moments or the memories. God meets us in those places and meets with us here. At this time, I invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious Lord, you pour out your spirit on us again and again. Empower us to be a people who advocate and pursue righteousness, justice, and freedom for those in bondage. Strengthen us in faith, in the love, and in the world. And may the gifts of the Spirit enable us to do your work. Amen. We continue with the readings. The reading for today is from Exodus 20, verses 3 to 11. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them to worship them, for I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Punishing children for the inequity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing in steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not equip anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 19, verses 8 to 14. We will be singing the psalm responsibly by whole words. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes.
according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Just in case you went, hey, what's he trying to pull? That was last week's message. It's actually the gospel left passage for the entire month of July. I think we're stressing love. May God's grace and peace fill your heart with it. For the past few weeks, a few moments of each Sunday service has been set aside for silent reflection, for contemplation, and for prayer. The plan is for this time of stillness to remain part of our worship until we host our Back to Church Sunday service in early September and we kick off the new lecture every year. But what has become clear since these moments have been introduced is that some of us do not do quiet very well. After the first time, one person came up and asked me why we had to be silent for 10 minutes. I pointed out that we were actually silent for two. It's clear that especially in our COVID-affected lives, we want our time filled with sound, with voices, with music, or with activity, with anything. For some, those two minutes of stillness seem like an eternity, or at least 10 minutes, instead of just 120 seconds. But in the stillness, in the calm, we have an opportunity to reset ourselves, to consider our actions and our inactions throughout the week. We can give our minds a respite after a week filled with details, with action, clutter, and noise, and certainly before the pastor begins his weekly session of yammering from the pulpit. Silence, inactivity, rest. That is what God wants for God's people and for creation. Today, the free slaves are still encamped at the base of Mount Sinai. In the previous chapter of Exodus, God calls on Moses to remind the people about all the things that God had done for them. They had been liberated, nourished, and brought through the wilderness to Sinai. And now that they are free, God sets down his plan for the type of community, the type of kingdom, that the people are called to form. It will be a kingdom that will be the polar opposite of the one they just left. Rather than a kingdom focused on wealth and power for the privileged, it will be a priestly kingdom, a holy nation, where all are blessed and all are most certainly treasured. It will be a nation born out of God's love and kept through the people's commitment to that law. The first part of the commandments set out are those that guide the people's relationship with God. Those commandments are known as the first table. The commandments that follow are intended to guide the people's relationship with their neighbors. But all the relationships involved are to be built upon love, and such love will be the hallmark of the community. And this has been made possible through the promise that God has made. And living into, following those commandments, will be the people's response to God's actions in their lives. 
in the stillness of this morning. Let us consider the final command in the first table, the one that turns the entire ten to the back half. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the resident alien in your town. God also called for the land to enjoy a time of inactivity so that it could be refreshed and renewed without having demands placed on it. Every seven years, the land was to lie fallow so that an abundant harvest could be enjoyed for the years to come. It was important for the freed slaves to hear such divine instructions. They had just left a culture that forced them to work from sunup to sundown seven days a week, no days off. And complaints were met with brutality or, if they were lucky, indifference. The people had been Egypt's working poor. In their new life, the seventh day was to be a day of rest and of justice and of equality. Everyone was to share in its benefits, in the benefits of rest, even strangers and foreigners. Walter Brueggemann is a renowned Old Testament scholar. He wrote Sabbath as Resistance a few years back. And in the book, he says that the Sabbath was actually a protest against a 24-7 consumer society where only a few people enjoyed an abundance. And such a society creates and worships idols as the people pursue precept pursue possessions and status. Perhaps things haven't changed so much since then. If you look beyond the first table, you'll notice that the commandments deal with possessions and trusting each other not to place items before another's well-being. Telling the people to rest allows them to reset their priorities to reflect on the love they receive and are to freely share. And to live in the stillness of the day without fear or worry, worry associated with the need to be productive in the eyes of the world. Such a weekly reset in lives filled with activity and obligations allows us to renew the relationship we have with God and with others in our lives and to allow love, grace, to envelop those around us and ourselves. Brueggemann wrote, the other gods are agents of occasions of, and occasions of anxiety, but we, by discipline, by resolve, by baptism, by Eucharist, and by passion, resist such seductions. And in doing so, we stand alongside the Creator in whose image we are made. By the end of six days, God had done all that was necessary for creation. And so have we. God has been active in our lives. And we have received the gift of grace through Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. There is no more we need to do, no activity we need to undertake for that. So perhaps we can make those moments of stillness part of our days. Moments when we can just be. Not reading, not texting, not calling, not working on the computer, not doing. And certainly not worried about producing a thing. Not filling those moments with anything or worrying about our supposed obligations. And just immerse ourselves in silence and in calm. And in doing so, answering God's call to rest and renew. And in the 
these few moments, or maybe even in the quiet rest of the day, we can remind ourselves that we are loved, we are a treasured people, and we are to share that with others.
You may be seated for a meal for the first. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Ever present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach us humankind to honor and protect all cre creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ you reconcile all things, Motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. God of grace, <coughs> through Christ you bring peace. For sure, all who are worried or distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soon, those suffering in mind body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who, ser who serve as caregivers. Today, we pray especially for Orville, Susan, Laura, Karen, Peter, Tyson, Glenn, Jake, Lynn, Klaus, Joyce, Roseanne, Audrey, Helen, Pat, Phyllis, and Guy, as well as all those we name before you, either silently or aloud. God of grace, In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. God of grace. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace. God of every time and place. In Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. At this time, I invite you to please stand as you're able. So for some of the rookies in, in the crowd, we share a sign that keeps using sign language. So if you put your hands like this and then slide them like your frame, then you sweep out, then you bring them back till your thumbs touch, and you open your palm. So it's peace be with you. And Pinky and thumb out, and also with you. So let us share a sign of peace with one another. Tony, you look like you're putting a hat on people. <laughs> Take these.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which we prayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the Church say Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor endures, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, 
Lord, be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. All are welcome at the table. Thanks be to God.
invite you to jump the gun here. I have to invite you to please rise as you're able. The body, blood, and blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live with others, both friend and stranger, that all may know to come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now receive into your hearts and into your lives the blessings of our Lord. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 634. 